director of grant making program director of grant making programs here at New Music USA. I use he him pronouns, and I am joining you from New York City on the unceded lands of the Lenape people. On this webinar, I am joined by my colleagues Monisha Chaudhry, a program manager, and Krista Ebert, program associate, who will be guiding us through this session. This is. This will be the third year of our Creator Fund, which was formed in 2020 through a reorganization of endowment and annual funds in order to more directly support individual artists initially during the more difficult times of COVID, but now beyond as they continue, as times continue to be challenging for individual artists. We have a lot of information to get through, but hope to have plenty of time to answer questions throughout. Uh, we have organized the presentation into numerous sections, and there will be pauses after each section throughout to answer questions, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end as well. We ask that you please leave your question in the chat, and we ask that if possible, please try to post questions related to the section being discussed first so that we can try to focus on each area. Um, my colleagues and I will be switching off presenting and answering questions in the chat throughout the, the course of this webinar. We hope to get through as many questions as possible and we'll do our best to answer any questions after the webinar as well. So be sure to put your question in the chat. If we can't get to it in the chat, we'll do our best to make sure that we answer it after, after the fact. I wanna say a special thank you to our captioner, Bonnie, and our ASL interpreter, Cheryl and Gloria from Sign Nexus. And with that, we will get started. Okay, so our agenda for today, we're gonna to go over an overview of the Creator Fund, eligibility, what the fund supports, review criteria and process, the awards deadline and timelines, as well as walking through uh, completing the application. Let's start first with an overview of the fund. The fund is meant to support US-based composers and music creators for activities and collaborations that are in progress or, in progress or commencing by April, 2023. So that means that they're in process or will begin by April, 2023. Proposals can be process or performance oriented. This program is meant for to provide grants to individual music creators uh, regarding costs related to collaboration with other artists and practitioners um, in order to stimulate the creativity and collaboration in these times. So what do we mean by music creator? A music creator is any individual composer or artist who is creating their own original music. That could include songwriters, producers, composers, improvisers, uh, music creators may also be performers. Uh, they may also just create music for others to perform. In this instance, uh, individual performers may apply to this fund, but only if their collaborator is a music creator as outlined. What do we mean by collaboration? Nature of a collaboration is really up to you to define. Um, it may revolve around an existing work that you want to bring to life or record or transform for a new medium, or it could be something completely new um, that you wanna try out with new collaborators, something uh, that hasn't been done before. Uh, this is really up to you to define with your collaborators. Most importantly, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, is that the work you propose will have a positive impact on the next steps in yours and the other participants' creative practice. What are some of the program priorities? Um, we aim to support and represent a broad range of individuals across the country and the musical spectrum. We expect the applicant pool and therefore the award pool to be very diverse in terms of genre, styles, and aesthetic. And we're particularly interested in applicants that display originality of sound, music, and artistry shaping the future of music creation. Our commitment to an equitable, equ equitable ecosystem for new music means that we are particularly interested in receiving proposals from BIPOC and other representative artists. We will prioritize music creators who have evidence of prior ex experience making music professionally and, or, and are engaged in music on a professional level. We can talk about this a little bit more. 
Um, projects should be in progress or to be developed in roughly the next year. So something that's newly coming to play or, or already kind of in process. Uh, we will be giving priority style priority to artists who demonstrate the greatest need for our support. And we'll talk more about need a little bit later. Given the large volume of applications, uh, we will prioritize the following in making determinations. Uh, music creators that have, as I mentioned, music creators that have evidence in or experience in making music professionally and are engaging in on a professional level. Uh, projects that do not already have funding are limited funding. Um, so those projects most in need of support. Projects that involve new collaborations. We're interested in um, supporting new uh, work, new collaborations, um, uh, new explorations. Uh, projects that involve artistic growth or stretch, innovation, or have an impact on creative practice. Projects that display originality of sound, as I mentioned, um, shaping the future of music creation and sound. And projects that impact or contribute to the community in some way. That could be your community around you, community of artists that you're working with, collaborators, et cetera. So questions, we have one question in the chat. Uh, can a nonprofit organization executive director who is also an individual artist apply as an individual artist for a project he's working on and collaborate with the nonprofit organization? Um, it, I guess it depends on the, the type of organization and the collaboration you're proposed in working on. Uh, this fund is really meant uh, for individuals. So it would have to be uh, yeah, if it's if you're a if you're an individual music creator and you're working with a choir, then then that should be fine. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. So the idea is that you're the music creator leading the project, working with an organization as the collaborator. So hope that answers. Now let's, uh, I'm going to hand over to my colleague for uh, to talk about eligibility. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Krista Ebert and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a program associate at New Music USA, and I'm gonna go over the eligibility with you. So these are the main points of eligibility, and I'll dive down a little deeper in future slides, uh, but first and foremost, this grant is for individuals only. Organizations cannot apply. Uh, the lead applicant must be a United States-based music creator. The applicant must be pursuing music on a professional level. And as Scott mentioned, the activities and the use of the funds should be in process or planned as of April 2023. Next slide, please. So each lead applicant may only submit one request. You can apply once uh, for, for uh, the creator fund. If the lead applicant appears on another application as a collaborator, uh, please note that only one project containing the applicant will be selected for an award. Uh, similarly, if a collaborator appears on more than one application, only one project containing the collaborator will be selected for an award. And uh, lastly, the lead applicant may not have been funded in the previous round of New Music Creator Fund. Last year, it was called Creator Development Fund. The application deadline was December of 2021, and you would have been awarded in April of 2022. Uh, if that is you, please wait until uh, next year to apply again. So what is a US-based artist? What we mean by that are artists working and living in the United States or the United States territories and have be create, creating work here. That's who is eligible. Uh, you do not need to be a United States citizen, but you do need to be living and working in the US or US territories. And due to funding restrictions, we're not able to provide funds to artists and collaborators who are working outside of the United States. Uh, if you are someone who splits your time between locations, you just must have a US-based address and primarily be doing work within the United States. So as mentioned a few times, only individual artists can apply. Individual performers may also apply as long as their collaborator is a music creator. I get this question a lot uh, in the grants email. Uh, if you are part of a collective or band, you may apply, but you apply as a lead applicant. 
and you're gonna list your band members or the collaborators as um, the collaborators. So, and then please note, if you are granted the funds, you as an individual are going to receive the grant, not the collaboration or band. Uh, organizations are not eligible. There's a better fit for you with a new music organizational fund grant, and that offers direct support to organizations. And we're gonna open that up in early 2023. May I answer any questions on eligibility? Please put your questions in the chat and not the Q&A function so that we can try to keep all the questions in one spot. Thank you. There's a few, yeah, there's a few questions that I wanna tackle. Um, Go for it. Oh, they keep coming in, oh my goodness. I'll read, the, <laughs> I'll read the other ones while you answer those ones. Uh, there's a, a question to clarify uh, where it says in one paragraph says individual performers, their music collaborator must be a music creator where, it, but then later says we want to create collaboration with artists from other disciplines. So what, what we mean by this is a music creator, the lead applicant being a music creator can work with any collaborator from any discipline. So that could be dance or other disciplines as well, or other musicians or music creators themselves. Um, individual performers relates mostly to solo artists who are performers and maybe not music creators themselves. Um, so it depends on if you define yourself as a music creator or not. If you're an individual performer, we ask that your collaborator or at least one of your collaborators be some sort of music uh, creator. So a soloist um, playing accompaniment to something of an existing work wouldn't necessarily um, qualify in this in this case. Uh, please clarify one, okay, that's what I just did. Um, in terms of professional musicians, uh, this is a question that came up. Um, basically, the panels will be looking at uh, bio biographies and or websites, social media aspects to determine pro professional quality. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule. You don't have to have in necessarily be um, income generated like that. Uh, someone said that I'm doing professional level work, but not being paid professionally. Um, that's fine. Uh, it, it will be sort of the level of work that you've done, the amount of experience you have doing it, um, that kind of stuff. Um, can a sound artist, uh, can a sound installation artist who works with performers apply? Yes. Uh, do, do we need to know the exact collaborators? For instance, I'm writing music that don't know yet who will be forming my music. Um, this one's a little bit more tricky. It would be great if you could um, identify collaborators uh, for the proposal you'll need to. That's a requirement in the application. You'll need to identify at least one collaborator. So it would be great if you could identify someone that you would like to work with, you're planning to work with, you hope to work with. Um, so this, there needs to be some sense of who, who it is that you'll be working with when you apply. I see a lot of questions about need, and we're going to go over that in a little bit. Uh, but one question is, can sound installation artists apply uh, with performers? And the I answer think. is yes. You yes. answered that one. Yep. And then um, can the collaboration involve another medium artist, such as dance and choreography? The answer is yes for that. And then do you see any others that are related to eligibility? Uh, the grants are not age related or preferred. This is a grant that's open to um, any artist working. Uh, we, we will be interested in uh, understanding the impact that the fund might have on your career. So we're hoping that the, the fund will have an impact on your creative practice, um, but there is no age, uh, there's no age just, you know, sort of determination whatsoever on this. So it's open to all artists working now. Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, the applicant can can the lead can the applicant collaborate with any U.S. citizen who resides outside the U.S. as long as the applicant lives in the U.S. That's a good question. Uh, yes, you may collaborate with artists that are not in the U.S. Um, but be be aware that our funding can only go to fund U.S. based artists. So. In this case, in that case, then the funding would go to you, or you, you and your time. We wouldn't be able to provide funding directly to the mm -hmm. the collaborator that's outside of the U.S. So, but you can have collaborators outside the U.S. You can work with ensembles outside of the U.S. But the funding will need to go to U.S. based um, uh, individuals. Thank you for helping with those questions, Scott. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go over what the fund support. Um, 
Manisha, may I see the next slide, please? Thank you. So most importantly, we want to hear from you about what you need. Uh, and we prioritize proposals that have the most potential to have significant impact on the creative practice. And what do we mean by that? We mean, how will this project help you move forward into the next stages of your career? Uh, the impact it will have, why funding for this project is needed at this time, and then the urgency for the support. So your project proposal could be on many things, and I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, the project proposal could be for planning of new work or creating new work. Uh, your project proposal could be uh, virtual work with other artists and online. Uh, it could be for research and development, so uh, researching and developing new projects. Uh, your project proposal could be for live performances or workshops. It's any activity that involves the music creator leading collective creative work. So there's going to be costs uh, for your collaborative work, and these are the funds that the funds would support these, these uh, actions. Uh, so it would support time needed to create new materials or the time needed to initiate these new collaborations with the artists you put in your proposal. Uh, it would cover uh, the creation fees for work in progress, fees for the collaborator or the performer, and also project-specific equipment. Additional costs on this slide uh, include recording costs, um, marketing or PR, uh, perhaps you, know, you want to spend it on skill building or technical assistance, um, uh, support for a digital presentation, so to make a video, and uh, also just other costs you consider to be essential, such as a child care for your or your collaborator's children. It's important to know what we do not support. Um, the following will not be supported by the program. Uh, benefits or fundraisers, uh, competition fees, projects that are already 100% funded will not be awarded the creative fund grant. And then projects that have already been completed are not eligible for this grant as well. Uh, and lastly, funds for international collaborators. May I answer any additions on uh, additional questions on fund sports? Let's look at the chat box, please. Yeah, I've got a couple I'd like to um, address. Uh, can oh, a great. composer can a composer qualify as a music creator? Yes. Uh, the grant application is, uh, when will that organization one open? That will be after the new year. That will open, um, I believe, some probably around February, mid-February, with a March deadline is what we're thinking now. We'll have more information about that after the, after the new year. Uh, my husband and I are looking to apply for our music collaboration with producers, so one of us would apply and the other would be a collaborator along with the producer. Yes, that, that sounds correct. In a collaboration between a theater artist and a songwriter, would it make more sense for the theater artist or the songwriter to be the lead applicant, or does it matter? I think in this instance, the songwriter might be a better choice for the lead applicant with the theater artist being the collaborator. Um, but if, I mean, uh, that would be my instinct at the moment. Uh, We already mentioned, yes, that this session will be recorded. Um, we are also will capture all the questions in the chat. And as I said, uh, hope to answer those. If we can't get to each of them, we'll make sure that we get to as many as we can. Uh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say there's a question about software equipment, and that would be covered in this grant, too. As long as it's uh, um, project uh, specific, then yes. So like if you're asking for a new computer, uh, for a large, for yourself, that might be a little bit tougher um, to to have funded. But if it's something specific for the project in, in question, then that that uh, certainly is eligible. Thank you for clarifying. Um, okay, moving on to the review criteria. 
Uh, application is really evaluated on four review criteria, artistry, collaboration, need, and impact. And we'll go through each of those in turn. Artistry uh, or the projected artistic merit of the collaboration based on the proposal and existing body of work. So you'll be asked to, when we go through the application, you'll see you'll be asked to supply uh, project samples, um, up to three project samples, and, and the panel will be listening to viewing uh, these uh, project samples. So uh, some of the questions that uh, our panelists might think about when uh, assessing artistry are. Does this represent an opportunity for artistic challenge or stretch? Um, does the music feel original or distinctive? Um, do they does, do the creators demonstrate craft, uh, technical ability? Uh, what is the level of their, their experience? Uh, is there proficiency in mastery? Um, and is there artistic exploration that feels relevant and considered? So those are some things that the panel might consider when assessing artistry. In terms of collaboration, um, we'll talk more about some of these questions as well when we get to the application side. But you know, some of the things that the panel might look at when assessing collaboration is who are you collaborating with and why? Why is this important to collaborate with this artist? Uh, why is it important now uh, to do this work and this collaboration? Does this collaboration move the artist in a new direction or contribute to artist growth, artistic growth? Pardon me. Why are you leading the project now? Why is it a good time to do it? Uh, do costs relate, relate to the collaboration and other artists and practitioners? I know there was a question about that. You may um, ask for funds through this uh, program to pay performers, pay collaborators, et cetera. Um, as long as they're US-based, um, that is fine. Um, and would this collaboration happen without support from New Music USA? And so is this a, a collaboration that uh, would not necessarily exist if you weren't receiving funding for it. In terms of need, uh, some of the questions that the panelists will be looking at: uh, How will this fund? How will this grant be used to be used in the urgency of support now? So, how are you planning on using the money in service of this project? Why do you need our support? Why is it important to do this work right now in this time and place? Um, do you, are you paying yourself and your collaborators? So make sure you pay yourself and collaborators. Would this work happen without uh, New Music USA support? And why is our funding, why is funding for this crucial at this moment? So what's, why is it important to, to do this work now? And then lastly, impact. Um, the difference this project will make to the next steps of your and other participants' career. Uh, how will this project move you forward to the next stage of your creative practice? When will the work be done? Does the project incorporate exploration feel relevant? Um, does the project reveal something about the world? And finally, the viewer to question, discover, explore new ideas. Is there an understanding of where they are now and, and what they want to achieve next in their creative practice and how does this project get you there? Uh, does it enable the music creators to take the lead in development of new or existing idea? Uh, what will happen once the project is completed? Um, what happens next? Why is it important to do this work with these collaborators? That's a big question that often goes unanswered. Why, why are you working with these collaborators? Why is it important for this work to exist with these collaborators? Uh, how will this work impact or contribute to your community? So the community of artists, the community you're in, um, what, what is it, what are you giving to the world in a sense? So a, a question we often get asked is, is there a hierarchy for the funding priority, uh, a funding cri criteria, pardon me. Um, so just a, a bit about the process, applications will be reviewed through a peer review process um, using uh, 30 to 40 panelists working from across the country. And those panelists are made up of um, creators, composers, performers, uh, administrators that work with music organizations, um, et cetera. The panel process will involve two stages. Um, in the first stage, the panels will review applications by the criteria listed, those four criteria we just talked through. Um, and 
providing a score that will then be uh, averaged and create a rank to create a ranked list. So the review criteria in the first range will all be weighted equally. So everything has an equal weight to it. Um, the top scoring applications from the first panel or stage will move to a second panel stage involving a separate set of panelists who will then review each application based on the forward review criteria as well. Um, in the second stage, the need criteria will be weighted um, slightly, uh, aiming to help those projects most at need. Um, so the award determinations then will be made taking this final ranked list, um, the program priorities that I outlined earlier, and any uh, fundraising funding restrictions we might have um, to the funding that we have, whether or not we have funding specific for uh, the Bay Area or for uh, other locations. Um, and that is how those determinations are made. This was a question that's come up in the chat. Uh, how will applicants communicate need? So we ask you to outline the, your need for the support and how you want to use the money the urgency of support right now. So some questions to consider in answering this would be, you know, obviously how do you want to use the money you're applying for? Why you need the support? Would this work happen without our support? Or why is it important for our, our support to, to make this work happen? Why is it important to do this work right now? And how will, and eventually how will that lead you to new creative practices? And why is funding from New Music USA crucial at this time? So panelists will use the answer to this question along with the budget income information supplied in order to gauge urgency of support. And I think that leads us to some questions. Uh, I have other questions. Uh, uh, do you need to know exactly what would be the cost of the Proposal and is it necessary to know every cost and detail of the early stages of the project? No, that's not necessary. You can give us an, an you don't need to outline every single thing. Um, it, it's a very simple budget form that you can put in. Uh, estimates are fine at this stage, especially since it's early in the process. Uh, that's totally fine. Uh, would sound engineers count as possible collaborators? The answer is yes. Uh, yes, would this work happen without our support is indeed a tricky question. Uh, I think the question, the supplemental question to that is why is it important to do this work now? Um, sort of, a, a sort of a tag team on that is why is this, you know, this is where you need to go and you need to do this project in order to get there. And that's why it's important now. Um, and, you know, without the support, I won't be able to get to that, that area. Um, let's see what else we have. Okay, so uh, there's a question about when the funds need to be spent. Um, basically, once awarded, the projects have roughly about two years to complete. Um, we can, you know, uh, we've had extensions, particularly during COVID, uh, where projects um, have needed to extend a little bit further, but that's generally the timeline. Uh, we'll be asking, if awarded, we'll be asking for an update in August of this year and uh, additional interim reports as needed. Uh, okay. Workshop, uh, workshopping costs are eligible. I'm trying to, would it be appropriate to apply for help to attend a composer forum to workshop with live choir travel cost registration housing? It, I mean, I, I think that might require a, a specific, a little bit more information and you can email us more about that just to get a better sense. But generally that might be okay. Um, travel and things like that to go to a workshop is fine. Registration fees, depending on what, what it is, we might need to talk about. Uh, yes, you can have primary collaborators and secondary collaborators. I think there's space on the application to supply up to five or six, five or six uh, collaborators. Um, if you have more than that, or if you only want to list the primary collaborators on the application, you can list the others in the narrative or um, speak to the narrative. 
speak to them in the narrative. Uh, if the funding, if the project has partial funding, um, can the remaining funds be met with this fund? Yes, um, you can use this to, to get you over the hump, so to speak, um, if you need the funding to complete it. Does the recording need to take place within the US? Not necessarily, um, but be mindful that funds, um, that our funding can only be used for the US based uh, uh, artists involved. So if the funding is going to uh, an orchestra in Estonia or somewhere else, then that, that wouldn't necessarily be eligible. But if you were planning to travel to work with uh, an or uh, in ensemble overseas, uh, we could support the travel and your time to do that. Uh, moving on quickly to awards, deadline, and timelines. We plan to make uh, roughly 50 to 60 awards of up to 5,000 each. Our average award will be around 3,000. You can apply up to uh, $5,000 uh, for this fund, but and on general, our average award is somewhere around three thousand dollars. The fund is currently open. Uh, Monisha will talk through the the actual application in a moment. Our deadline is December fifteenth um, at eleven fifty nine Eastern time. Um, that's an Eastern time deadline uh, for those of you on the West Coast or in the middle. Uh, please be aware that that's an Eastern time. Decisions will be made in April 2023. Um, as we said, projects may be in process or recently beginning. Uh, they can be uh, process or performance oriented rather than leading to a definitive final out outcome. You will be asked to provide an outline of your progress uh, by August, by the end of August 2023. So as things sort of um, get moving, we'll be asking you uh, to give us any additional updates or uh, details. Um, I think I said most of this already. Uh, it's up for you to tell us how long you think this work will take. Uh, there was a question about timeline. Uh, generally, the projects tend to take a year to two years at most. Um, if it takes longer than that, then uh, we might have to have a conversation. Uh, or if there are problems that come up with it that need it make it delayed, then we can be accommodating to that. But generally, this this fund is meant for projects that are in process or just beginning, and that are uh, will take place relatively soon. Um, so if this is uh, uh, you know if you have a project that won't be taking place for the next three years or four years, um, you probably would want to wait uh, before applying till next year or the year after. Um, so it's meant for projects that are more uh, more immediate uh, uh, in, in those terms. Uh, there's a question about oh, yeah, a question. It seems like you want applications to demonstrate the project wouldn't be able to take place without the support of the award, but you also want the project to have started before awards are made. Can you clarify? This is a good question. Um, they don't necessarily have to start before awards are made. Uh, we would like them, they can be in process or they can be just beginning um, or they, you know, they can be at that stage of beginning. Um, but, you know, they can have funding as well. So the idea is really uh, to demonstrate, you know, why that, why it's important to do it now, what the need is that you have right now. Um, it's, you know, it's not an either or necessarily. Uh, and I know that some, some projects uh, may take a little bit longer to get going. And so it can be at the beginning stages. It can be at the beginning stages of the project. Um, so that's fine as well. So we want to be accommodating to projects that might be in process, but also ones that are, are getting going. Uh, uh, will applications receive either all or none of the amount they request, or is there a possibility of being awarded a partial amount? Partial amounts are definitely um, uh, a part of what we do. Uh, so if there's not enough funding to give a full award, we will give a partial award. Um, usually that is done by looking at the budget um, and what is you know maybe the most need. We usually prioritize 
artist fees and creation fees um, when we're looking at uh, giving partial funding as a way to support artists uh, first versus other aspects. Um, in regards to proposals for research and development, uh, when asked what impact will this work have for you, is this regarding the completion of the final project or the results of the research and development stage? Um, I think that's up to you to articulate. Um, you know, obviously the research and development will will lead to will have impact on what the final project will. Um, so I think you know, you, in a lot of cases in research and development, you need that that time to 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 actually make the project work. So that already there has has quite some impact to it. Uh, in terms of work samples, uh, sorry, um, continuous clips preferred or highlight uh, reels preferred show different moments. Um, usually the panel prefers, what we found is the panel prefers uh, full uh, or full work samples as much as possible, um, depending on how long they are or movements of works, but um, highlight reels don't usually uh, work as well because the, the panel likes to see how our work progresses. Um, so uh, you can supply highlight reels, but I wouldn't make that the only work sample that you provide. Make sure that there, there are some, either a full movement or a work um, that they can, the panel can assess uh, a, a totality of, of something. Uh, could you please give some examples, context of artist fees for individual creators within the scope of these grants? Sure. Um, some examples would be the time it takes you to create something. So your your basically would be like your creator fee, the time it takes you to write the music or um, the time it takes for you or other artists to be in the studio to record a work. Um, it could be performer fees uh, for performing a work by a, a composer. Um, those are just some of them. It could be, you know, for workshop and development, it could be the time it takes for you to do that. You know, the, you, you want to pay, we want to pay you for the time that it takes to do the work that needs to be done. So those are some examples of artist fees. All right, moving on to the application. Hi, everyone. I'm Monisha and I'm the program manager here at New Music USA. I go by the pronouns she, her, and I'll be walking you through the application process itself. So completing the application, you'll find the application at, um, at this hyperlink, uh, newmusicusa.smapply.io slash prog slash new music creator fund with underscores as you see. Um, so that is uh, the S, this, uh, SM apply site. Um, and you must register if you haven't already have a login. And when you're completing the application, you'll be asked to provide the following, um, a written video or audio narrative so you have three choices, can't do both or all three, but one of them, um, work samples, two to three work samples and a budget. So for the narrative, you must choose to submit either a written narrative or a video or audio. So the written narrative has to be up to it can go up to 350 word, um, or you can provide a video or audio, and that has to be five minutes max. Um, and those are your choices. So what's the application like? In order to be eligible and move forward in the review process, you must answer the following questions. You need to share the strength of the collaboration proposed. Tell us about the impact uh, this project will have and the difference this project will make in advancing yours and the other participants' careers. And you need to outline the need for support and how you want to use the money and the urgency of support right now. And also provide when you will do this work you know, uh, provide us with any relevant dates.
So our first question, question number one, we'll be asking uh, us to, we'll be asking you to tell us about the strength of the collaboration proposed. And some questions to consider are, are um, you can tell us about the collaborative work you'd like to lead, including who you're proposing to collaborate with. Um, also, why are you choosing this collaboration? And why is this important now? Third is, is this a new collaboration? If an existing one, how is this moving in a new direction or contributing to artistic growth? And lastly, would this collaboration happen without the support from New Music USA? So that's on collaboration. So the second is on impact. So you would need to tell us about the impact this project will have and the difference this project will make in advancing yours and the other participants' careers. So some questions to consider are, how will this advance or help you move forward to the next stage of your creative practice, as we have said before? Um, what will happen once the project is completed? What, will, what impact will this work have for you? Why is it important for you to lead this work right now? Why is it important to work with these collaborators? And lastly, how will this work impact or contribute to your community? So community, for example, would be the community of artists that you work with or the community that you're in yourself. It's up to you how you define your community. And so yeah, that's on impact. Our third is need. So please outline the need for support and how you want to use the money and the urgency of support right now. Some questions to consider. How would you use the money you're applying for? Why do you need our support? Would this work happen without our support? Why is it important to do this work right now? And does the project already have support? And if so, why is funding from New Music USA crucial at this time? Our fourth question is, when will you do this work? So here you would be able to let us know any relevant dates that pertain to your project. So that was the narrative. And then we will need um, two to three work samples of your recent work. Uh, we prefer video, but audio is fine. Images are fine. Um, you should include at least one sample of your own work and feel free to add a sample of your collaborators' works as well. You may upload an MP3, videos or image files or provide links to YouTube or video or Vimeo. Then we will ask for budget. So here you'll have to outline how you'll plan to use the funds. And that could include, as we've spoken before, individual costs for you and or your collaborator, funds for performers, uh, project specific equipment, recording or other fees. But it would be great if you could be descriptive. That would be helpful for us. Um, and then we would love for you to outline any funding that you've received or projected to date for the proposed projects. That's the budget. So <laughs> we do encounter some tech issues. So don't fret. Um, I just want to prep you with some of the issues that we've come across. And um, so for example, if your video is not loading or you can't see it in the preview in the, within the application. So we would suggest that you prioritize an MP4 video um, using the most up-to-date software that you have as they will embed more easily and seamlessly. And if you're providing links to YouTube or Vimeo, please be sure to provide embed links and make sure or make sure these links are public. 
And if you're providing links to password protected work samples, make sure that you provide the password in the description of the work or at the tail end of your narrative. Otherwise the panel will not be able to access your samples. So please make sure that we're able to see your work. Another tech issue we've encountered is when the budget isn't adding up correctly. So in that case, please only use numbers and decimal points when adding budget numbers. Um, don't use any other symbols. Um, don't include a comma. And if you do include commas, um, the system won't add correctly. So that's that. And so I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, since I am sharing my um, my screen, I can't see the chat. So yeah, I want some of my colleagues to come on. <laughs> there are a number. I'll try to I'll try to whiz through a bunch of these questions. Um, so is the link to SoundCloud performance acceptable? Yes. Um, I'm going to try to work on some of these uh, work sample questions. Um, Video and audio up Okay. Is it okay to include unmixed pieces from the current work as work sample? Yes, that's fine. Uh, is there length guidance for video? Uh, in terms of the video for, oh, I think Krista answered that question. But then there was a further question after that. So there's a five minute limit for the video narrative. So when you're answering those four questions, um, if you choose to submit video or audio, there's a five minute limit, but for work samples, Scott, I'm not hundred percent. There's no, yeah, there's no, there's no limit or, um, you know, outward amount of time as well. Be mindful though, if you, if you, um, supply work samples that are very lengthy, I would suggest, um, adding cues or providing cues for the panels to, um, sort of direct them and you want to make sure when your work samples you really want to curate the the experience for the panel so that they're listening to um exactly what you want them to to tackle first uh, what's most important for you for you to have them hear um that's most important so if it's a lengthy work sample you might want to provide cues for where they should start or if they there are a couple of areas within a work that you want them to evaluate then then provide multiple cues. Um, if it's a short work sample, you can just provide the whole thing. That's totally up to you. Um, how recent should the work samples be? Um, uh, relatively recent. They don't we don't have a we don't have a specific time frame on that. Um, what's most important is um, that the panel get a sense of what the work is that you're doing now. If this is work that you've done 20 years ago or 10 years ago um, that isn't relevant to the work you're doing now, then that that might be more difficult. So uh, th there's no real time time frame on that, but um, generally the more recent, the better. Um, if the project is underway, are samples desired from the existing work? Uh, if you have them, that's great. And if you feel comfortable providing them, or if you have work samples that you feel demonstrate the quality of work that you do, um, that's fine. It's up to you. Uh, it's really up to you. It's usually, I mean, if the panel can get a sense of the project, um, as it's happening, that's usually a good thing. So they, that that way they don't have to sort of think about, okay, well, this work sample is representative of what might be, whereas they can hear sort of where you're working. That, that usually is, is helpful. Um, there was a question about if we have any statistics for the percentage of grants awarded to emerging versus mid-career versus late-career artists. Have you seen a pattern? Um, we don't track that. That's a little hard, hard to track because uh, Merging composer can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, um, but there we've awarded uh, grants to the full gamut of um, composers uh, through this program, mid career, emerging, um, established. So it's it runs the whole gamut. Um, I don't have a I don't have a pattern. It, it really just depends, um, but it it does represent the large spectrum. Uh, there's a question about would the fund support travel costs so I can work with my collaborative uh, collaborators in person. Yes, uh, the fund would support travel costs uh, for you to travel to work with collaborators. That's fine. Um, 
Let's see. Krista, do you have anything you want to answer? I was just typing out um, if there's someone was asking if there's guidance for how much the total budget should should be. And we don't have if please correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't have any restrictions or suggestions for total budget. It's just for this. We have a five thousand dollar budget for this part of the creator fund, but your total budget will be just however much the project is. Yeah. So the uh, the the project budget is what the project budget is that's based on your your project so um it really there's no top end of that i mean if it's a large project um that's that's totally fine you can uh, supply the budget to that um and but we would only be able to supply up to five thousand dollars of of any any uh budget that you have um if your request is less than that or your budget is less than that then we can go up to what you, you have requested there's uh, also there's a yep. few questions about um, work samples and whether or not you use your own work samples or the work samples of your collaborators. And I think it's just up to you and, uh, you know, use your judgment on what shows the best example of your project proposal. Is that correct? It's my first month here. So that's why I'm double checking all of my <laughs> answers with Scott <laughs> and Monisha. We would definitely want a, a, a work sample of the person who's applying. and and also of the collaborators. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> um, there's a question about if the lead has two grant applications with two different collaborators, would both be approved if feasible? Uh, well, first, um, the lead applicant can only be on one application, so you have to pick one of them. Um, but either application in, that is outlined here, a U.S. lead with Canadian artist, but all costs are in the U.S., that's fine. U.S. lead with U.S. musical talent, that's totally fine. But be mindful that um, as a lead applicant, you can only appear on one application. Um, if you are a lead applicant and then appear as a lead applicant, but also appear as a collaborator on another application, um, uh, only one of those would be recommended for funding. Same if there are collaborators that appear on multiple applications, same, the same collaborators that appear on multiple applications, um, only one would be recommended for funding um, in that case. So, Is it all right if collaborations start in January, February, and continue into the year with the final project culminating later in the year? Yes, that is fine. Uh, but if you're collaborating, your collaborator does not need to be a U.S. artist, uh, but they will not be. Uh, what we're trying to say with the U.S. versus international is that the funding that we provide can only go to U.S.-based artists or organizations. So, if the performers or composers or artists that you're working with are U.S.-based, we can provide funding to them as a collaborator. You can have a collaborator that's not based in the U.S. Um, that's fine. However, funding would would then would only be able to be earmarked towards those uh, you as the US based artists. Um, it doesn't, there isn't a prioritization in the in the panel process at all. This is really just comes down to the money where the money goes. So the, the panel will review your project just the same as they review any other project It has nothing to do with um, the competitiveness of the project. It's just, you know, the, the funding that we just we just can't give funding to artists or organizations that are outside the US. That's just how it works. Uh, there's a question about the word limit. So um, the narrative itself as a whole, there are, we are asking you to answer four questions in the narrative um, in 500 words. Yes, so not each question is 500 words, but the whole narrative is 500 words. We provide in the guidelines um, some, some potential questions to consider, but there are only four basic questions that you need to answer. And to answer those, um, that's a 500 word limit for that whole thing. Um, if your work sample is long, is there a space in the application to share queue times with the panelists? Yes, uh, there are different areas. If it's a video upload, there's an area to put description. If it's an audio upload, I believe there's also an area to, to provide um, a description or some cue points in there. I would recommend that. Also, a key point that often comes up and, and really hampers some applications is if your work samples are password protected in any way, please, please, please provide the password or else the panelists won't be able to access those. Um, you can provide them in the description for the work sample. 
you can provide them in the narrative if you need to. Um, so please be sure to do that. Um, the work created by past awardees, um, a lot of it is currently being worked on. You can find a list of the past awardees on our website on the Creator Fund page um, that links mostly to their websites. Um, we, as those works will complete, we will uh, provide more, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Examples of, the, of their work being done, but right now um, a lot of it is still being created. Um, Uh, all right, Christy, you want to tackle any other? So we only have a couple minutes left. So um, this record, this uh, webinar is being recorded. Um, the chat is being captured. Uh, so we'll be addressing uh, whatever questions we we don't um, get to uh, this after that. Once the webinar is done and we have those, it, it will be uh, put, I believe, on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can access it there. Uh, we may take some of these questions and put them into um, general areas and answer those general area questions, just FYI as a way to um, uh, tackle them. Should CVs or bios be included anywhere in the application or should they just be available for pers on personal websites? There is an opportunity, you, you will be able to and will be recommended that you create a bio on the application itself. Um, there isn't an area for you to upload a CV, but there is an area for you to include a bio. Uh, there's a budget question. Total budget or just grant amount? Um, that's up to you to decide. If you if you want to just outline the budget for your grant, um, I, I know the panels tend to like to see the overall budget of the project, but um, we're not. Uh, you know, that's that's dependent on how you'd like to do it, uh, whether or not you want to include the full budget or just what it is that you're requesting funds for. Mm. Covering recording costs, would the artist be in control of the masters? Uh, let me try to understand this question. For covering your recording costs, would the artist be in control of the masters? I.e., could an artist pitch a record recording to a label or would the organization prefer the project be released independently? That's up to you um, in terms of how you want to work, whether you want to work with a label or whether you want to produce it independently. Um, what the thing is, uh, that's that's up to you. We've seen both both come through here, so it's totally up to you. Uh, there is nowhere, there's not a place to upload a resume. But you can complete a bio. Uh, we're not asking for letter of supports from collaborators at this point. Um, that's not something that we're requiring. Um, so, oh, we're at the three o'clock mark. I'm sorry, I was lost track of time. I was looking at the chat. Um, I want to thank you, everyone, for joining us for this webinar. Um, if we didn't get you, oh, can you go back for a second, Vanisha? Um, if we didn't get to your question, uh, so you can certainly email us at grants at New Music USA. Uh, we will get back to you as soon as possible, usually within 24 to 48 hours. Um, like I said, we'll, take this, we'll be taking this chat, uh, as questions from the chat as well, and answering those uh, and attaching that to this video. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, and I look forward to seeing your applications come through. Um, we're uh, happy to help however we can, so please feel free to email us and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.